So who here has ever worn a cast? If you have, you would notice when you take it off, typically you see much smaller and weaker muscles. Obviously, preventing these negative side effects of immobilization is of clear and obvious clinical relevance. So what if I told you by simply exercising the opposite non-immobilized limb, we could prevent the decreases in size and strength under that cast? What I'm describing is a concept called cross-education, where single arm strength training could lead to an enhancement in strength in the opposite non-exercised limb. Now, previous research has used cross-education with people wearing a cast or splint, and they found that by doing this strength training, you can preserve the size and strength under that cast. But what people haven't observed or investigated is how it affects multiple muscle groups under that immobilized apparatus. People have trained one muscle group, wrist flexors, for example, and they've only looked at the opposite immobilized wrist flexors. So my research focused on how this training of one muscle can affect multiple muscle groups underneath the cast. So what we did is we had people wear a cast on the non-dominant left forearm for four weeks. We had two conditions, a control group that wore the cast and didn't do any exercise, and a training group that wore the cast and trained their non-immobilized wrist flexors. And here's what we found. The group that did the wrist flexion training, they observed complete size and strength preservation of the wrist flexors under that cast, with no effect on the extensors. So the extensor muscle groups observed the typical decreases in size and strength that you would no normally see with regular cast immobilization. So I'm going to repeat that for a second. The group that did the wrist flexion training observed complete size and strength preservation of the wrist flexors, but not the extensors. So in other words, when they take that cast off, the size and strength is the exact same as it was four weeks prior before they put that cast on. It's pretty incredible, especially from a clinical application perspective. So where does my research differ? What have we learned from this? First of all, cross-education appears to be a highly specific transfer effect for these preservation effects. So flexors to flexors, not flexors to extensors. And we now know that we can take this and apply it to improve clinical applications. We now can understand that we probably need to exercise multiple muscle groups in the non-immobilized limb in order to ensure we get complete size and strength preservation under that cast.